This is video number two in a series of eight on the statutory limit of public debt. Um, this uh, episode has excerpts culled from all of these PDFs which are letters from the Secretary of the Treasury to Congress asking them to raise the debt limit. And in this episode, um, I have collected excerpts on the themes of the statutory debt limit, debt issuance suspension, government business, extraordinary measures, and we have two more supplemental videos coming after this one. So without further ado, statutory debt limit. I respectfully urge Congress to protect the full faith and credit of the United States by acting to increase the statutory debt limit as soon as possible. That is the Treasury Secretary to the leaders of Congress, typically the, uh, the party heads in both the House of Representatives and the Senate. Failure to increase the limit would be deeply irresponsible. Commentary. I'd say arbitrarily increasing the debt limit is deeply irresponsible. In fact, the very epitome of irresponsible conduct. I respectfully urge Congress to protect America's good credit and avoid the potentially catastrophic consequences of failing to act by increasing the debt limit in a timely fashion. Commentary In comparison, the little old Federal Reserve is a well-behaved puppy compared to the Treasury Secretary badgering Congress with soft-veiled threats of catastrophic consequences if the debt limit is not raised. Either the Treasury Secretary is serious, or this is just routine. If it were routine, would this be the language to be used? And if it is serious, this sounds very damn concerning to be warned of catastrophic consequences. Now, over the 70-plus PDFs that these excerpts are drawn from, a lot of these phrases are repeated from letter to letter. They don't quite take on the uh, the quality of a form letter but the urgency and the language used uh, does transcend from letter to letter. It is imperative that Congress act as soon as possible to increase or suspend the debt limit in a way that provides longer term certainty then the government will continue to make its payments. Janet Yellen, May 1st, 2023 commentary. A subtle suggestion there to just do away with the debt limit would be preferable. Suspend the debt limit in a way that provides longer term certainty. In episode one I went over why doing away with the debt limit would be unconstitutional because it would allow Treasury to fund their alphabet agencies under the executive department without any check from Congress. Like take the FBI, uh, the CIA, EPA, IRS and give all of those employees a 100% uh, pay raise. That would not be outside. There wouldn't be no check against them not doing that. The debt limit impasse that took place in 2011 caused significant harm to the economy and a downgrade to the credit rating of the United States. The drawn out dispute caused business uncertainty to increase, consumer confidence to drop, and financial markets to fail. If Congress were to repeat that brinkmanship in 2013, it could inflict even greater harm on the economy. Commentary. Hold on, the debt limit is a standard, a line, a threshold, beyond party politics. The uncertainty and the confidence and fall should be associated with the sheer fact the debt limit needed to be raised and not the fact there was an impasse or a dispute. I am writing to follow up on my previous letters regarding the debt limit and the Department of Treasury's ability to continue to finance the government. 
Once the debt limit has been reached, Treasury has authority to take actions regarding investments under the Civil Service Retirement and Disability Fund (CSRDF) and the Postal Service Retiree Health Funds Fund (PSRHBF). However, it is imperative that Congress act to suspend, to increase or suspend a debt limit in a way that provides longer-term certainty that the government will satisfy all its obligations. The recent increase in the debt limit provides only a temporary reprieve. I am writing to provide an update regarding the Treasury Department's ability to continue to finance the operations of the federal government under the constraints of the debt limit. Commentary. Janet Yellen writes as if having a debt limit is a high burden. That alone should prove there better well be a debt limit. As you know, the debt limit is the total amount of money that the United States government is authorized to borrow to meet its existing legal obligations, including Social Security and Medicare benefits, military salaries, interest on national debt, tax refunds, and other payments. Commentary. It is interesting the items they list here, and also what is not listed and tucked under the other payments. Since January, I have highlighted to you the risk that Treasury would be unable to satisfy all our obligations by early June if Congress did not raise or suspend a debt limit before that time. If Congress fails to increase the debt limit, it would cause severe hardship to American families, harm our global leadership position, and raise questions about our ability to defend our national interest, security interests. Commentary and raise questions about our ability to defend our national security interests. That is not good. If Congress fails to increase the debt limit, the government would have to stop, limit, or delay payments on a broad range of legal obligations, including Social Security and Medicare benefits, military salaries, interest on the national debt, tax refunds, and many other commitments. Raising the debt limit simply allows the government to meet those existing legal ob commitments to investors, seniors, soldiers, and millions of other Americans. Refusing to raise the debt limit does nothing to reduce those existing obligations or cut the deficit. I think raising the debt limit is the responsible thing to do for our country, the responsible thing for our economy, if we were to fail to increase the debt limit, we would send our economy into a tailspin. Speaker John Boner. Huh. Well, I do not know what world we live in when something like that can be said by the Speaker of the House of Representatives in comparing some of the words of antiquity about honor, prudent finances, integrity, ethics, uh, some tie to the average working person, because debt is serfdom. The debate over the debt limit can seem esoteric, but a failure to resolve it in the near term would have painful implications for people in every walk of American life. It would have a serious impact on members of the armed forces who depend on paychecks to feed and house their families, Social Security recipients who subsist on their monthly benefits, veterans who rely on the government for their retirement and health care needs, and small business owners or employees who provide good and services to the country. Commentary. A lot of attention is placed on the people aspect of the government if the government cannot dish out funds. I don't think this fully refers to the military industrial complex um, these words and small business owners or employees who provide goods and services to the country. That could extend to the military industrial complex. So where does payments to the military industrial complex show up? Most likely, the line items in the executive department budgets, because as far as the letters from the Treasury Secretary goes, 
This is as close to the military industrial complex as it gets. Members of the armed forces who depend on paychecks to feed and house their families. Over here there's a, a number of PDFs that uh, pertain to the daily activity subject to the limit and even some of like the Department of Defense that's a military fund the explicit military is not in here as far as subject to daily limits here is the extraordinary measures we will be getting to them in a second some of the uh, socialist programs do show up here like the unemployment trust fund and a lot of uh, pensions FDIC a lot of insurances alright I want to emphasize that contrary to a common misperception the debt limit has never served as a constraint on future spending commentary um question then what pray tell is the debt limit for if the congressional ninny hammers did not have the capability to vote to raise the debt limit spending would be constrained one way or another the next theme debt issuance suspension Congress passed the Continuing Appropriations Act to suspend a statutory debt limit through February the 7th, 2014. What that suspension period ends, when that suspension period ends, the United States will reach the debt limit again. So it was my understanding that when they run up to the debt limit and nothing's been done, they have a number of options that uh, they can put into ex uh, exercise and one of them is the debt issuance suspension uh, it sort of lets the debt run over the top of the debt limit I think I believe and uh, then they also have constraints under the suspension constraints under the extraordinary measures that requires Congress to act and raise the debt limit or continue acting under suspension or extraordinary measures and it is just an irresponsible mess public law 115-56 suspended the statutory debt limit through Friday December 8 2017 secretary Timothy F Geithner notified Congress of his determination that a debt issuance suspension period would begin on that day, December 31, 2012, and last until February 28, 2013. On February 4, 2013, President Obama signed the No Budget, No Pay Act of 2013, Publication L113-3, temporarily suspending the statutory limit through May 18, 2013, which temporarily rendered further use of these extraordinary measures unnecessary as required under 5 USC section 8348 section 1 section 2 I am notifying you of my determination that by reason of the statutory debt limit I will continue to be unable to fully invest a portion of the civil service retirement and disability fund CSRDF not immediately required to pay beneficiaries. In addition, because the Postal Accountability and Enhancement Act of 2006 provides that investments in the Postal Service Retiree Health Benefits Fund (PSRHBF) shall be made in the same manner as investments for the CSRDF. The Treasury Department will also continue to suspend additional investments of amounts credited to commentary since the federal government is the largest employer in the USA it sounds like a shakedown for Treasury to say the CSRDF and PSRHBF won't be able to be funded unless the debt limit is raised 
commentary. Hmm. Is having the Treasury Secretary, who is a civil servant, beg Congress to raise the debt limit not a conflict of interest? A little bit on the civil service aspect, because as you can see from the, the notes that are going on, the civil service and the postal workers, their pensions and health benefits are of uh, enhanced concern to what the Treasury Secretary is giving as far as reasons to Congress why they should raise the debt limit. Um, according to Wikipedia here, United States Civil Service, Civil Service Program, 2.79 million civil servants. Um, that is less than 1% of I think it's like 0.8 percent almost reaches 1 percent of the uh, population of the USA um, and they are highly influential in American lives due to the power that they have in the federal agencies there are three type of federal employees the competitive service uh, senior executive service and then the accepted service here's where you get some of your alphabet soups the CIA, FBI, State Department, IRS and on down the line so there are all civil servants Department of the Treasury has a lot of uh, undersecretaries and offices under Alcohol, alcohol and Tobacco and Trade Bureau, the Mint, Inspector General, and these all have employees and they want their pension restored. So they want that debt limit to be uh, raised so their funds will be restored in full and with interest. Under the statute that governs the CSRDF, the term debt issuance suspension period means the period of time that the Secretary of the Treasury determines that Treasury Secretaries cannot be issued without exceeding the debt limit. The determination of the length of the period is based on the facts as they exist at the time of the determination. I had determined that a debt issuance suspension period began with respect to the Civil Service Retirement and Disability Fund and that Treasury was also suspending investments of amounts credited to the Postal Service Retiree Health Benefits Fund in accordance with law. I have also determined that by reasons of the statutory debt limit I will be unable to invest fully the Government Securities Investment Fund G Fund of the Thrift Savings Fund part of the Federal Employees Retirement System expressly authorizes the Secretary of the Treasury to suspend investment of the G fund to avoid breaching the statutory debt limit. And this is all right up on the line. Because you gotta imagine uh, if you're maxed out on your credit card, if you're maxed out on your debt limit, all of this stuff is, is just bumping the roof. And they're having to suspend all these different funds, delay extraordinary measures. Just what the hell is going on? The Bipartisan Budget Act of 2019 suspended the statutory debt limit through July 31st and informed you that beginning on August 1st, the outstanding debt of the United States would be at the statutory limit. I will be unable to fully invest a portion of the Civil Service Retirement and Disability Fund, CSRDF. The Treasury Department will suspend additional investments of amounts credited to the Postal Service Retiree Health Benefits Fund, PSRHBF. Commentary. Whatever the so-called pandemic was, real or contrived, the reason to be prudent is to survive shocks reason to be prudent is to survive shocks which apparently the economic impact of the pandemic was running us up to the debt limit 
and that is true as a matter of fact I even think they sent out checks to everybody government business next theme uh, just to, to flesh out what is in the letters the US government makes approximately 80 million separate payments per month well, that's a lot default would not only increase borrowing costs for the federal government but also for families business and local governments reducing investment and job creation throughout the economy Treasury Secretary set the benchmark interest rate for a wide range of credit products including mortgage mortgages car loans student loans, credit cards, business loans, and municipal bonds. Accordingly, an increase in treasury rates would make it more costly for a family to buy a home, purchase a car, or send a child to college. It would make it more expensive for an entrepreneur to borrow money to start a new business or invest in new products and equipment. Commentary. Amazing how much is based on borrowing. That does not sound conducive to freedom. For example, the government's daily gross cash flow, excluding financing, over the past year averages nearly 50 billion per day and has exceeded 300 billion. That's a lot. Our Constitution provides that no money shall be drawn from the Treasury, but in consequence of appropriations made by law. No money shall be drawn from the Treasury, but in consequence of appropriations made by law. U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 9, Paragraph 7. Commentary. An underestimated clause in the U.S. Constitution, but one obviously on the Treasury Secretary's mind. A good deal of household wealth is held in financial assets, and much of household and business spending is funded by borrowing. Thus, lower asset prices and higher borrowing costs tend to weigh on private spending and greater uncertainty about asset prices. Borrowing costs and economic activity can make households and businesses reluctant to spend. Roughly half of U.S. households own stocks either directly or indirectly through mutual funds or 401k accounts. So this fall in equity prices reduced household wealth across a wide swath of the economy. Between the second and third quarter of 2011, household wealth fell 2.4 trillion. Commentary. So one half of the USA is safe from the shenanigans of the stock market. Good for them. That is reassuring. Commentary. Where did that money that fell go? What happened? What effect did this have on the amount of money in circulation? If it fell 2.4 trillion, where did it go? <laughs> Somebody got it. Had to have got it, I would think. Sovereign debt concerns in Europe were affecting domestic financial markets, and part of the mortgage spread widening likely reflects those developments. Those same concerns pushed down Treasury yields, so on balance, mortgage rates actually declined even as the spreads widened. If the widening of mortgage spreads that resulted from the debt ceiling debate were to take place now, when yields on Treasury securities have been rising, the result would be a higher mortgage rate that would restrain the housing market and household spending and financial markets here and around the world are watching the United States closely. How closely? The debt of the United States consists of two components. One, debt, debt held by the public, e.g. the Treasury securities that are periodically auctioned by Treasury, and two, debt held by U.S. government accounts. This second category includes, for example, the investments of the Social Security Trust Fund and other trust funds, and consists of special treasury securities that are issued directly to those trust funds' accounts. The debt held by the U.S. accounts is approximately $4.6 trillion. In other words, it constitutes roughly a third of the debt, April 4, 2011. 
and they have achieved a great deal of Byzantine avenues in doing this because I believe that the debt held by US government accounts were purchased with Federal Reserve notes which themselves came from um, Treasury bonds also it's called monetarizing the debt um, I'm sure somebody can argue with me on that and that is fine I will just run down the Byzantine corridor and get lost myself extraordinary measures is the next theme this is the word that they use a lot and I am going to take license here and for a reason because at the end the last one of the paragraphs is the icing on the cake so for every time that it says extraordinary measures I'm going to say merciless extraordinary measures the merciless extraordinary measures Treasury has been undergoing in order to avoid default on the nation's obligations in the absence of congressional action Treasury be forced to take merciless extraordinary measures to continue to finance the government on a temporary basis I am writing to provide additional information regarding the Treasury Department's ability to continue to finance the government and the merciless extraordinary measures we have undertaken in order to avoid default commentary that would be merciless extraordinary measures to you mister the Treasury Department will begin implementing the standard set of merciless extraordinary measures that enable us on a temporary basis to protect the full faith and credit of the United States by continuing to pay the nation's bills. Because Congress has not acted to approve normal borrowing authority, Treasury must begin implementing merciless extraordinary measures that enable us on a temporary basis to protect the full faith and credit of the United States and continue paying the nation's bills. The merciless extraordinary measures currently available are 1. Suspending sales of state and local government series treasury securities. 2. Redeeming existing and suspending new investments of the Civil Service Retirement and Disability Fund and the Postal Service Retirees Health Benefit Fund. 3. Suspending investment of the Government Securities Investment Fund and 4. Suspending investment of the Exchange Stabilization Fund. The period of time that merciless extraordinary measures may last this year is subject to heightened uncertainty related to the economic impact of the pandemic. Yet the use of merciless extraordinary measures enables the government to meet its obligations for only a limited amount of time. It is therefore critical that Congress act in a timely manner to increase or suspend the debt limit. When I previously wrote to you in December, I estimated that Treasury would exhaust merciless extraordinary measures in late February or early March. Based on our best and most recent information, we believe that Treasury is more likely to exhaust those measures in late February. While this forecast is subject to inherent variability, we do not foresee any reasonable scenario in which the merciless extraordinary measures would last for an extended period of time. Commentary Using the word exhaust and continually doing so is not particularly reassuring at the least. At that time, Treasury anticipates that it will need to start taking certain merciless extraordinary measures in order to temporarily prevent the United States from defaulting on its obligations. Commentary. How about y'all do something a little bit more substantial than temporary? Eh? This is the government. United States? Republic? Anybody? At that time, Treasury anticipates that it will need to start taking certain merciless extraordinary measures in order to temporarily prevent the United States from defaulting on its obligations. Commentary. That sentence taken as a whole is so entirely negative as to be mortally toxic. Let's read it again. At that time, Treasury anticipates 
that it will need to start taking certain merciless extraordinary measures in order to temporarily prevent the United States from defaulting on its obligations. Whew, that is kind of sour. In May of this year, the U.S. government reached the statutory debt limit and Treasury began taking certain merciless extraordinary measures to be able to continue on a temporary basis to pay the nation's bills. Today I am writing to inform Congress that as of today Treasury has begun using the final, the final merciless extraordinary measures. There are no other legal and prudent questions to extend the nation's borrowing authority. The impact of those measures was incorporated into the forecast that I shared with you last week and Treasury continues to believe that merciless extraordinary measures will be exhausted no later than August 17, 2013. Commentary. While we are all living our lives, this is what the Treasury Secretary of the U.S., the country, Pax Americana, is saying to Congress. At that point, we would be left to fund the government with only the cash we have on hand which we currently forecast to be below 30 billion. Commentary. So all things being said, the US government runs so close to the bottom, they have cash on hand that amounts to less than some of the multi-billionaires lose in a day due to poor stock price decreases. Or they lose in a day to stock prices decreases. Uh, the name of this video is Poor Beggars. And if you know, if we only got thirty billion in the bank account, well, it should also be noted. All right, this is the last paragraph. The reason why I've been harping on that word merciless. It should also be noted that these extraordinary merciless extraordinary measures are less useful than in previous debt limit impasses. In 1995-96 debt limit impasses, for example, the monthly increase in debt was not as large and the merciless extraordinary measures were therefore able to postpone the date by which the debt limit needed to be increased for several months. The same was true during the 1985 and 2003 debt limit impasses and as we noted below, some merciless extraordinary measures that were used in the past are no longer available of or of limited use today. Commentary. So, our merciless extraordinary measures are getting less and less merciless. That sounds extraordinarily discouraging. But with the overall trend, it is not surprising. Commentary. Like a junkie, more and more potent solutions are needed to provide a fix. More to come later.